Hello, and welcome to the March 1st regular meeting of the Hopkinton School Committee. I will ask that you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> I will read through our agenda. Mr. Graziano is traveling. He will join us later if he can. Um, so I will keep an eye on whether or not he texts me to say he will log in, but I think we will muddle through just the four of us. Um, so first we will start with recognitions, followed by our first opportunity for public comment. After that we'll have reports to the school committee. We have a student council report, a superintendent report, uh, school committee chair report and then liaison reports under new business we will take a look at the high school program of studies the middle school program of studies we will vote on the director of student services contract <clears throat> and review the annual town meeting warrant under old business we will have our vote on the before and after care program contract and we'll have yet another discussion of the FY19 budget because that is our favorite topic at every meeting um, Following that, we'll have our second opportunity for public comment, and we will have items by consensus, and we are, fingers crossed, going to adjourn by 8.50. We'll see. That will be a challenge. Um, so without further ado, I would like to move right into the recognitions portion of the evening, and um, we have sprung an unfair surprise on Dr. Dr. McLeod, um, because as as you may all be aware, tonight is, although this is not the end of her um, work in the district, tonight is her last school committee meeting. So we have invited the principals to come and um, and to share some thoughts and, um, and help us to wish her well. And so I'm gonna turn it over to So the already rock stars. you're not listening to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We didn't ask. We're, this is a beg forgiveness situation rather than ask permission. That's right. Oh. So, um, I, I so I'm sitting down because I was the one that was nominated to speak. Otherwise, Vanessa, I would offer you my seat. No. So I apologize. <laughs> but, um, so at your last uh, formal school committee meeting, Kathy, we wanted to acknowledge your leadership and your accomplishments. As our superintendent, you've been a wonderful role model for the administrative team, a group you've assembled, groomed, and guided over the past five years. Many on this team actually started together with you five years ago, and others have joined the march somewhere along that journey. We've marveled at all that you have accomplished in the district, free full day kindergarten, the Marathon Elementary School, literacy growth for our youngest learners, improved relationships with town stakeholders, and so much more. You recognize internally and in public all the positive accomplishments of your administrative team. All of us, two of one, have always felt supported, respected, and motivated by you, and have learned so much. In fact, tonight I have the plastic folder system that you taught me. <laughs> <clears throat> Regardless of what we were discussing, you always put students at the center of it all. We admire your tireless work ethic and your willingness, or should we say eagerness, to take on a challenge. Kathy, you're a realist, a straight shooter, never afraid to get right to the point or offer your opinion on a particular matter. That said, regardless of, what we were regardless of what we were very busy working on or dealing with, you would always make a point to ask us about our families and our lives. What are the girls going to be for Halloween? How are the wedding plans coming? Does your son love kindergarten? You provided that model to all of us to find balance and humanity no matter the situation. You're a reflective leader, never afraid to revisit, regroup, reconsider, and in so doing, you've encouraged us to reflect on our practice and continually improve as district leaders. A courageous leader, a courageous leader is prepared to take risks when no one else will. A courageous leader has faith in other people. A courageous leader raises difficult issues and stands ready to give difficult feedback. In all of these ways and so many more, you've provided tremendous leadership to our team and to the district. We will use the things you've taught us to guide our work, individual and collective, in the Hopkinton Public Schools. The sign of any good administrator, especially superintendent, is that you leave the district in better shape than when you arrived. There is no doubt that that is the case with you, Kathy, for the past five years. Thank you from all of us. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Get right in the middle. 
Oh, Mike's going to get it. You're shorter than Evan. You have to go straight up. Uh, lastly, today is Thursday, so I'm going to look at my Thursday folder here. I have something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. And um, I, I can't really say anything better than what you just said. Thank you very much for summarizing that it was it's very difficult and I mean we know it's not the end of our work together fortunately um, it's just the end of our everyday work together for the time being and um, and that it, you know it's really striking all of us I think how significant um, an impact you've made and how much just the depth of what we've done in really a very short time and I think I've said this to you before, it's very difficult to be a game changer in a very high performing district and that is something that you have managed to do and so we all owe you a huge debt of thanks for that. So thank you very much. Thank I'm going to leave James. you alone now. Okay. Oh, thank <laughs> <you>. <laughs> um, I just will say that it was just, um, I've, I've just been telling everybody how hard goodbyes are for me and, uh, and so to that extent um, folks have been kind enough to not put me through that so tonight was <laughs> no because Sorry. it was it didn't feel like a goodbye tonight it, it did feel like a lovely 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 tribute um, but I do want to point out that we were in a pre-meeting here and I looked out I could see I could say here I actually I heard Lauren's laugh <laughs> and I looked up and I and I looked at Carol and I said what are the what are all the principals doing here and fortunately, she filled me in because <laughs> it gave me a minute to walk around and compose myself. Because um, um, although I may be a straight shooter and I may be decisive, um, I also wear my heart on this, my sleeve. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just been such a pleasure to work with all of you and so hard to leave because of that. Well, so, thank you. thank you for this lovely tribute and for all coming out tonight. It means so much to me. Thank you. And you can go on now. All right. <laughs> um, and it's always lovely to see this group all here. So it's a, it seems fitting to have the principals all here. To thank you. Um, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Oh, you're not on me I'm yet. not on Good. you. you can, I'll, I'll give you a breather. Um, we are... Uh, now at our first public comment section, if there's anybody here from the public that would like to come up and speak about anything, we invite you to do so now. Okay. Um, next we'll start with reports to the school committee and I see that we have um, two of our student council members right here. So come right on up, Bridget Belger and Zach Sitsky. I just am worried I called you your sister's name. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like, wait, which one is it? Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, so we have a lot going on at the high school right now. Um, to start off, I guess we'll give a quick winter sport um, update. So all of the athletic teams had great winter seasons. Um, before I get to the teams that are still competing, um, Boys basketball finished second in the league, second in the league, and made tournament um, after not making it last year. Um, wrestling had a great season. Um, swim and dive had a really good season. Um, Bridget came in third at states, which is really exciting. Congratulations. Um, and the track and uh, indoor track also had a great season. I had a chance to watch <coughs> their state meet um, over break at Reggie Lewis, and it was I'd never been to a track meet before. Um, it was a lot of fun. We had our class president um, set a school record. So that was a lot of fun to see. Um, and then the three teams that are still competing, we have cheerleading competing at um, regionals on Sunday. We have girls basketball playing at Hopkinton tomorrow night at 7 o'clock against Medfield. Um, they won their first round game here on Tuesday. So they'll have a chance um, tomorrow to hopefully win again. And then boys hockey is the uh, number two seed in the Division Three um, Central um, bracket, 
and they have their first game tomorrow night in Canton at 7.45. And uh, the another thing going on this weekend is the Business Professionals of America, which takes place at the Sheraton in Framingham. Um, we have a lot of students going again, and basically they're going to compete in different areas of business. Um, so that should be good. Um, and coming next week, um, next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, um, the Hopkinton Drama Department is putting on Harvey, which is oh. a play. So um, we hope to see you guys there. And we have the school com- school council meeting next Wednesday. Um, this upcoming week, our course selections for underclassmen, which is really exciting. And you guys hopefully don't have to do that. I know. Hopefully <laughs> they pick good classes. Um, we have the music concert next, um, not next Wednesday, Wednesday the 14th with all of the bands, chorus, and orchestra. Um, we have the principal's coffee also that Wednesday with Mr. Bishop, cotillion on Friday the 17th, and this week Be Free event was canceled due to the sports event, so hopefully a lot of people attend those. And we also wanted to say thank you to Dr. McLeod for your service and for everything you do for our schools. And we're so lucky to have you. So good luck with your future. Thank thank you you. so much. Thank you. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome to stay if you like. (laughs) (laughs) Of homework or you have to get ready for the game, we understand. (laughs) She says it every time you come. I know. I've never had anyone (laughs) take me up on it, but someday. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Um, okay, so is, is there any report that we have for you? Are you ready to pass it on? Oh, oh thank you. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's a, it's a blast. <clears throat> I'm just going to gather my thoughts. Um, would you mind going first sure. while I do that? Yes. Um, so I, for under the school committee chair report, I have approved for payment the accounts payable warrants 18-056 and 18-058. All warrants have been included in your packet. I have approved for payment the payroll warrant S18018. All warrants have been included in your packet. Um, Additionally, I want to announce in public session that at the meeting on February 15th, 2018, the school committee voted to approve and release the executive session minutes from the executive session meetings held on November 16th, 2017, December 18th, 2017, January 11th, 2018, as amended, and February 1st, 2018. At the meeting on February 15th, 2018, the school committee voted to release supporting documents for executive session meetings held on November 16th, 2017 and January 11th, 2018. In addition, we have gotten um, a series of emails regarding um, some of the the agenda, (laughs) items on our agenda tonight, Um, the contracts that we are voting in particular, all of those emails have been responded to either by me or by Dr. McLeod, so I don't think there's anything additional that I would add in terms of public comment. Um, And just a final, we can talk about this again in our budget um, portion, but I did want to remind everybody that um, we are still working on the budget. It's an unusual budget year. So we were just asked today to come to our next joint budget meeting, which I believe is on Wednesday the 7th, um, with the Board of Selectmen and the Appropriations Committee. So other than that, I think that that is all from me in terms of school committee chair report. Do you have a report? Yes, Yes. I'm good now. Um, I just wanted to remind the community and of course the school committee about um, our public safety forum. Uh, scheduled for Tuesday night right here at the high school in the auditorium. Um, we'll be have representation, as you know, from the police, fire department, um, children's youth. Um, uh, Denise Hildreth will be there. Um, representation from our administrative team that you saw and central office. Um, we're really looking forward to an open uh, discussion. Uh, and and an opportunity for people to learn more about what is happening both within the schools and the community and opportunities for improvement as well as community concerns. Um, So I really encourage people to come out to that and we're hoping for a great turnout. And speaking of great turnouts, um, I know that there was a Math Pathways Mm -hmm. meeting, uh, which I'll turn to Dr. Kavanaugh to talk talk a little bit about um, Tuesday night of this week. 
was Tuesday night right. of this week, and there were probably about 75 parents at the middle school to talk about um, the uh, idea that we are going to have two levels of algebra going forward in the fall. So, and I know that that is part of Mr. Keller's report tonight when he talks about his program of oh, studies. Okay. So I will not steal his thunder. Um, but mostly I wanted to actually thank Dr. Kavanaugh for her willingness to step in um, uh, over the next period of time between my superintendency and her superintendency and her willingness um, for if there was a gavel here, I could somehow pass it. Um, her willingness to step in without hesitation and take over the responsibilities of the role of superintendent um, in addition to the, her own responsibilities as assistant superintendent, all the while running a search for her replacement. Um, so not to minimize all of the things, but um, Carol, thank you for, for doing that and for being willing to. And I, I don't think I've even publicly congratulated you um, for the replacing, for being Hopkinton's next superintendent, but um, I couldn't be more pleased and, um, and appreciative at the same time. Oh, so. Well, thank you so much for everything, and you know this is my pleasure, really. Thank, thank you. you. So that's it. It's just a warm and fuzzy meeting all around. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and actually, what you just said reminded me that we do have the forum to, to meet the assistant superintendent candidates on March 14th. March 14th. March 14th. So information will be coming out about that, but that is before our next meeting. So thank you for saying that, because that's a good reminder to let people know about that. All right, so I think we're ready to move on to liaison reports. Does anybody, I'll start all the way down there. Sure, I have a brief report. We've been working on the community calendar uh, with Jim Cousins from HCAM. There's been excellent progress. Jim has. Uh, uh, come up with a pilot which we ran through with uh, Dr. McLeod and there were some suggestions primarily around adding some details to the calendar events. Uh, we hope to meet with Ashok and uh, the rest of his team to go through what are some of the details that need to be added to the calendar. And um, there is a Hopkinton 101 uh, that's coming up being conducted at the library. So one thought is to possibly for HCAM to pilot it out and show it to the rest of the community um, to take a look at the pilot calendar. So we are excited about it. It has multiple looks and whatnot. I'd be happy to send a link if you all are interested to look at the pilot. That'd be great. great. Thank That'd you. Be great. And can I just jump in? Thank you, Mina, because we met just this afternoon, because I think not only the opportunity to have everything at one glance, um, there's, there's also different views of the calendar, depending on if you're visual or mm. not, or if you like colored folders like Alan and I do, then you would just like that other view. Um, but what I really think is going to be fabulous is not only for scheduling purposes, people can look and see the many things that are going on in one evening, um, but it also reinforces the reality that there is never a night when there isn't a conflict. And I know I did receive one email from somebody, you know, concerned about the public safety forum who really wanted to go to two things at once. And when you look at that calendar, even now, without the school events that embedded, it is just, it's tremendous, but also just re a reality that there are just so many things going on in, our, in, in this wonderful town. So it's going to be a wonderful community service. And, uh, and again, we, we do thank Jim for his enthusiasm oh, around absolutely. it. Absolutely. He yep. was on board right away, yep. and he took it on. Um, yeah. Thank it's, you. It's turned out very well. Well, it also reinforces what huge uh, job HCAM does, because they somehow do get to two places and three in one night. <laughs> that is and true. tape everything so that if you can't be in one place, <laughs> but you would like to be, if you can only be in one place and you'd like to be in two, you can, <laughs> you can check the other one out um, probably usually by the next day they have it posted. So um, yeah. hopefully people that can't, that have that conflict for mm. the safety forum will be able to watch it. I know they're yeah, if I may get 10 more seconds, you know, there were other community leaders who participated actively in providing feedback, what would work, what wouldn't work. There was EHOP, HPTA, uh, HEF, uh, we had uh, HDCA as well as the Youth Commission, Denise Heldreth, the library, so many people were involved and everyone's excited that great, it's great. gonna come up soon. Fantastic. That's great. Do you have anything, Jen? So, no, actually, two of the meetings that I was supposed to have had to be rescheduled, so I have no liaison reports for you today. Wow. Well, I guess, policy? sorry, I was, should say, yes, let me back up. <laughs> so we had a policy meeting today, and we, we took a look at the rest of the, the calendar, speaking of calendars, for, for the rest of the year, um, and I think we have 
six policies that we're going to be taking a look at between now and the end of the year, and that pretty much wrap things, wraps things up for the year. So, it, you know. Plenty left for me to do, or right, Yes, absolutely, Nance. We, we tucked a little aside for you. Appreciate it. So you won't have to do any policies next year. Right. <laughs> I feel like we've done a lot this All year. Done. So it's, you're welcome. Yeah, we've looked at a lot of things this year. Future yeah. school committee. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Very good job. Sure. <laughs> so I do just a quick, uh, the, I, it's the bullying intervention and prevention committee met again this past week, th this week, uh, it's been a long week. Mm. And really the document is in very solid condition and ready to move on to the poly policy piece and get it ready to move forward and get it here in April is when we're, right? Mm -hmm. That's the part we save for you. Right, the policy piece yes. that has, mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly There's right. a little star next to it. So, but, it but it has been a great, uh, a great committee of some really committed people, both parents and people from, from within the district. It's been great. And our students. The students have been phenomenal. I oh, yeah, that's really yes, awesome. Yes, we have had two very uh, articulate and very strong contributors. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Dr. Cavanaugh has been a tremendous uh, push forward with this, so. Thank you. Um, and so I, I will report just very briefly on the athletic field subcommittee. We did have a meeting this week, um, and actually we have a lot of things on the agenda for the 15th that we'll be bringing back, but we um, did look at the bids for, um, for the project, for the individual infill for the field and the, and the carpet and all of that. So we'll be bringing that to the school committee. Um, at our next meeting as well as we're in very good shape with our agreement with Parks and Rec regarding the management of the field um, and the generation of revenue and um, maintenance and all of that. So all of that is a preview of what's to come at our next meeting. Um, and I'll probably in 20 minutes think of three more other reports that I was supposed to give you, but that's all I can, that I can come up with for right now. So. I think that we are ready to move on to, other than just to say that Mr. Graziano confirmed he's not going to be able to call in. Um, so we'll, we'll soldier on without him. So I think we're ready for the high school program of Great. studies. Oh my goodness. We're zooming right along. Well, okay. I will note that every time we feel like we're zooming along. I know, I shouldn't jinx it. I, I shouldn't jinx it. I won't jinx that. I'll go fast, I promise. <laughs> no. Depth is good too. Right, exactly. So welcome back, Mr. Bishop. It's always uh, wonderful to have you here. And uh, school committee, as you know, the um, changes to the program of studies is what, what we're discussing tonight. Um, there's been a very a, a wonderful memo uh, in the packet that is also out publicly, of course, um, describing all of these changes. And um, with that said, and also some courses, interestingly enough, that, that didn't run this year. Um, and then the magic that Mr. Bishop does in adding these new offerings at totally no cost. So he is here tonight. I'll kick it back to you, thank you. Um, to talk about the changes to the program of studies. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. And, and thank you for having me to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about the program of studies for, for next year. It's a process that starts back in late November, early December, where I meet with a group of uh, students, uh, principal's cabinet, student council, and we talk to the students about what are some of the courses that you would like to take that we're not currently offering. Uh, so we kind of get a sense from them, uh, and then I take that information and meet with some of the SMLs and, and get their opinion on sequence in their departments, credits, uh, leveling, and also maybe some options that they're considering uh, implementing into their uh, program of studies. So we have good conversations, uh, and that led us to uh, today in, in the proposal that we have submitted to you all. Um, as Dr. McLeod said, you look at the, the memo, there are 10 additional courses that we're going to be putting in and two internships, so it looks like there might be a budget impact, but there really is not. Uh, I, I may have mentioned this before, but we often have more classes in the program of studies than we actually run. Um, it's all based on student interest and teacher availability, so if students are wanting certain classes and staff wants to teach it, we'll put it in the program of studies. If it runs, great. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And now in that memo, there's a list of classes that did not run last year, just to give you kind of a sense of that some are on the, uh, some are on the master schedule some years and some are not. Some classes might run three sections one year, they might run one section the next year. So it kind of is a flexible, fluid situation. Um, I thought I'd very quickly go through some of the offerings uh, and then answer any questions that you have about that. So as you can see, they're kind of clumped within departments. Uh, so um, 
under the leadership of Karen Reno, who is the new SML in wellness, we have been working quite a bit this fall, but it also kind of goes back to Bruce Elliott, our former SML, uh, last January when we were getting feedback from students that they wanted more engaging electives at the junior and senior level. Uh, we had four different classes at that time, I believe, and, and they just were looking for more options. So uh, we really challenged that group to come up with some different electives, and, and, and kudos to the wellness department, because I think they've come up with some great options, ranging from Rad for Men, because we do have a Rad for Women class right now, so we sent uh, Mr. Hooker, one of our teachers, to get trained this fall. So we're excited about that. We uh, announced that at the class meetings this week, and it got a big cheer from a lot of the students. So I think they're excited about that. Uh, ballroom dance is a class that we're formally putting in the program of studies. We've run a few classes this year, uh, and that's Karen Reno's specialty coming from Medfield. So we kind of had that in the, uh, we've ran a section or two this year, but it wasn't formally in our program of studies, just to kind of see if kids were interested, and kids have loved it so far. So that's going to be formally in the, in the program of studies. Officiating in sports for kids who want to go on and be an official. Uh, lifetime pursuits, which is kind of an outdoor or activities type wellness class, as you can see from some of the descriptions and things they'll be doing, health and nutrition, and then optimizing academics through movement, which is going to be more of a semester-long pilot program where um, Karen Renault will be working with students, uh, doing some type of movement activities, and then taking larger assessments to see if that has an impact on the scores that the kids have, which is, which is research-based. So we're excited to offer those classes in that department. Within our business technology and engineering department, uh, that's, a, that's a, a, a department that continues to um, grow uh, student-wise in terms of the kids wanting to take those courses. Uh, one area that we've identified that we want to continue to improve upon is our computer science and programming offerings. So uh, this year we have the AP Computer Science Principles class within this department. We're going to offer a computer science discoveries class, which is more of kind of a basic level hardware programming uh, networking uh, type of class. Uh, which I think a lot of kids will be interested in. Um, HHS Today, you talked about Jim Cousins earlier. He's our HHS Today teacher, and it's a very popular TV segment. It's a short, usually eight-minute video that we'll send out every other week during advisory. And this kids run it, and that's a class. And we've had a lot of interest. It went from 11 kids first semester to 22 kids second semester. And we, continue, we see that continuing to grow. And a lot of kids want to take it a second time. So that's why you see HHS Today, excuse me, HHS TV. Too. It used to be HHS Today, now it's HHS TV, so a little confusing there. But the second section of that for kids who want to continue in that field. And then another class within that department is Reengineering History, which we're really excited about. Engineering is a, is a subject that a lot of kids want to continue to take. We do have a sustainable engineering class, as well as an intro to engineering. This is called Reengineering History, where they're going to look at historical projects uh, from an engineering perspective that failed and kind of go back in time and figure out a way to see if they could create something where it wouldn't fail. And so kids, when we announced that at the class meetings, also got a, a big rise. Um, we're adding a, a financial algebra class, personal finance, for our upper level math students. We've had a lot of feedback uh, from families and students about more classes around personal finance, money matters, taxes, banking, and things like that. So it, it offers another option besides calculus, statistics uh, during their senior year. So. Uh, we're excited. And the next two I'm very excited about, we, we've had some kids that have wanted to show some interest in um, getting involved with making some decisions at the school uh, or athletic leadership. So we decided to come up with this idea of internships with Ms. King in our athletic department. So any student who's a junior or senior who's interested in, in that field of administration, they can either do an internship in the athletic office if sports is their passion or in the uh, main office with Mr. Han and Mr. Pomerville and myself. So it'll be a semester long internship. Uh, they'll be able to get a grade, credits, and at the end there'll be a, a project, a culminating project that they'll have to present. So that's, um, so that's it for the proposed new courses. We do have some new leveling options in our visual art and music departments, what I wanted to mention. Um, we've been talking about this probably now for two years, gotten quite a bit of feedback from students and parents through surveys, as well as talking with members of these departments. And for upper level visual arts classes, so studio art two, three, and four, photography two, three, and four, and any kind of upper level art class, a student can choose to take that at an honors level. So that is going to be a new thing as well as with music, any ensemble music courses, concert band, symphonic band, chorus, strings, the students don't have to choose that, but once the semester starts, if they want to take it at an honors level, there'll be a additional component in presentation at the end of the semester for them. And then at the end of, of the memo is just courses that we didn't run last year, just so you guys have an FYI of, like I said before, that kind of fluidity of the master schedule. So, yeah, and that's where we're at with the, the program of study. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about it. Does anybody have questions?
<laughs> um, so I'm first very excited with all these offerings that you have, um, specifically the RAD for men. I think that's a great thought. I don't think we talk enough about that. And um, so that's exciting. And the other one that you talked about, uh, re-engineering history. I want to take it. Mm, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's very interesting. And likewise, internships, I, I think in general internships, help a lot, uh, get a real life experience of what's going on. Yeah. So a lot of thought clearly has gone into all of this. Um, so some of my questions are around you know, the process when you come up with, you talked about that you sit together with a bunch of students, what their interests are. Do you look outside um, of <coughs> our school district, uh, whether it be within the state, within the country, internationally? to look for some inspiration of what the new program Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Yes, we do. We, we're always constantly trying to look to see what other people are doing to see if we can adapt any of that. Uh, a good example, um, we sent the whole wellness department on one of our PD days this fall over to Lincoln Sudbury High School because they have a wonderful wellness department. And some of these ideas were generated from some of those visits that they went on. Um, as well as sending some people to Midfield High School. So we, we definitely do see what else is out there, both locally, we could probably do a little bit more kind of nationally and internationally, as you mentioned, but right now we kind of focus on what are other schools around the area doing. Um, and so that's part of the process in addition to talking to the students and SMLs. And I just want to say this, that I think the high school is already amazing of, you know, every little opportunity I've had to watch the kids or the programs, I've just been amazed. Um, so, but just want to keep at it. Yeah, absolutely. You always try to get better. Yep. Yep. Thank you. There's always room for improvement. I have, a, I have a question that I should have asked earlier the email, but I just came to me. So the visual art and music um, honors credit that the kids can get, mm -hmm. um, what is the added benefit for the kids what, that they can take it as an honors credit versus what, what it was before. Yeah, so the, the way that our, our setup is when it comes to uh, grade point average and, and leveling, if um, we call them core academic courses. So you have the science, I don't really like that term, but that's the way we call it. So it's science, math, history, English, and foreign language. Those classes are incorporated into the grade point average. The other courses that are incorporated into the grade point average are honors level electives. Wow. Okay. So currently right now, if you took a music class or an art class, it's not incorporated into your grade point average. And if students still want that to be the case, they can take that option. But if some students are really passionate about that, they don't have to make a choice between sticking with their passion or taking an honors class in another subject to maybe, and I hate to say this, but look at their GPA to try to boost it, which I think is things that we're working on and talking That's about awesome. the high school. So that is kind of the, the reason why this is kind of coming up. That's a great idea. That That's a really, really great, great idea. idea. I like that. <coughs> so anyway, all of these are fantastic. I love the way you guys came up with the ideas for the courses, and okay. I think this is great. Thank you. I, looks good to me. Better course selection than I can recall being offered when I was in high school. Or college. I was going to say or college. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of these I can't imagine having had the opportunity to take in high school. And it's yeah. great to see the students enthusiastic talking about what they're going to take for the yeah. next Absolutely. year. I just, yeah, I agree. I think I love how responsive you are to what the interests are of the particular population of kids that are in your building right now. And we've always seen that fluidity in terms of clubs that kind of wax and wane depending on, you know, what what's cool at the time with the group of kids that are here. But um, to extend that into academics and giving them opportunities to really explore things that are of interest to them instead of, you know, we probably all took the exact same classes when we were in high school because yeah. that's what everybody took. So um, I just, I think that, you know, obviously there's no a la carte education in public education, but the um, creativity that you display in trying to personalize it as much as you can for kids and letting them pick their own path, I think is really tremendous. And it's just so much more authentic to their learning and, and more, um, more beneficial to them in terms of moving forward and figuring out where they want to go. So I think that's fantastic. Um, so I guess I would look to Dr. McLeod for her recommendation as to whether or not we should approve the 2018-2019 high school program of study. Yes, definitely. I would recommend that we approve um, the changes to the high school program of studies as, as presented. So I just need a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. A motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, and so that is unanimous. Um, so thank you very much. Great. Thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. Excellent. Thanks, Evan. You're welcome to stay. Well, I thank you for our meeting. I want to watch Mr. Keller. Mr. Keller. Yeah.
And speaking of Mr. Kelly, I do want to put in a quick plug. We do have our eighth grade parent night coming up on March 22nd, so we're excited to, to, to meet those parents, and we're going to talk about this process as well with them. So. Wow, that seems unbelievable. I that is time for that already. Yeah. Fast. Whoa. <laughs> on the other hand, I am ready for warm weather, so. Okay. That's true. Today was nice. <clears throat> well Welcome back. Oh, sorry. Jake. Welcome back, <laughs> Mr. Keller. Thank you. Um, and um, thank you, as always, for um, sh lining up the changes in your program of studies in the way I think, you know, I think your program of studies was, is quite lengthy. Uh, it is, yes. Right? Yes, yeah, yes no <laughs> question. Many, many pages. Yes. Um, and so for, for particularly, you know, for those of us who are not as familiar as you are with it, to be able to look at the changes, which is basically is really what, what you're what you're voting, you're certainly more than welcome to to always look at the entire handbook. But the purpose of uh, what we're doing tonight is to vote the changes. And so for that reason, uh, Mr. Keller has, has lined up the changes um, between last year's and this year's and outlined them for you. And I know that you've been able to see that. Um, but I'll turn it over to you because I know you're going to want to speak to them. Um, yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so um, the memo that I presented uh, highlighted the um, significant revisions to the program of studies. Uh, and I'm, if it's OK, those are um, written up in the order in which they come in the program of studies. But I'd like to change that order if that's OK. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in order of ease, uh, greatest ease to um, more complex. Um, so the first item that uh, we're looking to change in the program of studies uh, is as it relates to grade 6 and um, grade seven, excuse me, grade six and grade seven science course descriptions. Um, so as you, uh, I believe, are aware, in 2016, we received revisions to the Massachusetts Science and Technology Engineering curriculum. Um, so grades six and seven descriptions now, um, uh, and the program ultimately reflect those changes. Um, the following year, we'll be making revisions to grade eight. This was our, our rollout plan to, uh, to incorporate those. Um, the second change to the program of studies uh, is a new course in grade eight uh, world languages. It's Mandarin Chinese. Um, so as you know, this past year we offered it in grade seven uh, to tremendous success, more uh, success than we, we expected one section. And we actually wound up with two sections. Um, so the anticipation is that those um, two sections of uh, students will continue with uh, Mandarin Chinese into grade eight. We'll continue obviously offering it in grade seven. And so that's in addition to this program of studies. Um, and then, um, so now I'll turn over to math, where we have two changes uh, essentially in math. Um, so uh, in grade six, we're going to be offering a new course called uh, Math Squared. Um, and so um, I'll talk a little bit about what we do with students whose uh, skills are more foundational and who need some additional help with math. Uh, when they come to the middle school, they typically take grade six math, like all of the grade six students, and then they take a foundation, what we call a foundations and applications of numbers class, or abbreviated in terms, and uh, called FANS. Um, so your grade six math class is with one teacher, and then your foundation class is with another teacher. Um, and that's been, um, we've seen some improvement um, on the part of students, but at the same time we realize that there are some, um, some areas of, of improvement in that, in that you're now seeing two different teachers who don't have the intimate knowledge of what you're doing in either setting. Um, and sometimes not applying the things that you're learning in one setting to the other setting. And so uh, what we're moving to next year is um, those students would still continue to have the same number of math classes um, and when you combine grade six math with the foundations in terms of periods. Um, but we're combining the class, so the grade six math would now be a, essentially a double block of, of math. So you'd have these students would have the same teacher, um, and they would be with that teacher for two periods of the day, um, on most days. We don't have uh, we we um, uh, they would be seeing that instead of a related arts course. Um, so the related arts don't meet every single day. The same related arts. So essentially, um, in the memo, it talks about the fact that uh, in our 12-day schedule, they would meet an additional five periods. So they'd have um, 10 periods of the grade six math plus five. So 15 periods in a 12. Uh, day schedule, if that makes sense. Um, so that we're work that we're adding to our grade six offerings, um, and then the other change that we're making to math is we are adding a course uh, to grade eight called uh, Grade Eight Honors Algebra One. So that's a new course that's designed for students that we feel have a strength and readiness for above grade level math. Um, and we believe that adding this course will provide greater, um, will provide more, will provide students with more access to algebra, place more students in there right now in grade eight. And I have this, if it's helpful, if I can pass this around. Um, 
So this is one of the things, as Dr. Kavanaugh and Dr. McLeod mentioned earlier, we had our math parent forum the other night. Um, so the, the, top, um, the top grid on there shows our current math offerings in grades 7 and 8. And then um, the bottom grid on there shows what we're proposing. So if you look at the top grid in grade 8 right now, you can see that students that are at or below grade level um, take math 8. Students who are on grade level or above grade level take honors math 8. And then students who are significantly above grade level take grade 8 algebra 1. So in talking to students, in talking to parents, in talking to our teachers, uh, we, and in looking at our MCAS data, um, we feel strongly that um, a lot more students could experience success in algebra. And we could be offering um, students access to algebra. Um, that grade 8 Algebra 1 course is a very fast-paced course that um, leads to uh, particular courses at the high school and it was designed that way, but we still feel like students could be successful in Algebra. So if you look at the bottom grid, uh, what we're offering, it's the shaded box, um, is grade 8 Honors Algebra 1 for students who are um, currently, would be currently placed in Honors Math 8 who are finding great success in Honors Math 8 but are not quite ready for the fast pace of the grade 8 Algebra 1 course. Um, so we believe we can get close to, uh, based on our MCAS data, based on what our teachers are saying, based on looking at our students, uh, that you know, nearly 50% of our students could be in one of these two algebra classes, grade 8 honors algebra 1 or grade 8 advanced algebra 1. Um, so I'll keep going and then obviously there may be some questions about any of the above. Um, so the next uh, change that we're making to our um, to our program of studies is uh, in terms of a related arts course. Um, this year uh, and the past several years, students have had access in grades six, seven, and eight to a course called Media Literacy. And um, we are going to be reducing that course, uh, having that only offered at grades seven and eight. And then in, in its place in grade six, we're going to be introducing a guidance seminar. Uh, and so the guidance seminar is going to be a proactive uh, way for our guidance counselors to interact with students, introduce them to the middle school, um, talk about self-management, self-awareness, decision-making, goal-setting, uh, relationship skills, and social awareness. Those are um, the major changes to the program studies for next year. Awesome. Does anybody have questions? Sure. Anybody like Mina? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm very excited to see these offerings. Obviously, a lot of thought has gone into this. Um, some questions I have are around the placement itself. You have listed them out in um, what you shared with us. A uh, couple of tests and the teacher rubric. Could you speak a little bit to the teacher rubric and the tests too? Yeah, so the different, so we look at MCAS, excuse me, students' performance on MCAS. Uh, we look at, um, um, there is a Iowa uh, assessment for algebra readiness, essentially, that has been uh, very helpful in, in, show, in predicting students who will find success in an algebra course. Um, uh, we look at um, students' performance in their grade seven math class. Uh, and then the teacher rubric asks, um, uh, has teachers talking about how they perform on a regular basis. So these are, stu are these students that are regularly asking to go above and beyond or seeking enrichment opportunities. Those are the major components. We also look at STAR Math, which is um, our benchmark assessment that uh, students take three times per year. And that gives us uh, a lot of information about how they're performing ab above grade level, on grade level, et cetera. And this Iowa test, is this something that um, students in the middle school take right now? Uh, it's something that we take, the students take in March. Um, so actually we'll be taking it in a couple of months. So all students uh, will be taking that Iowa algebra assessment. Okay, so it's, it's nothing new. Uh, I believe our students have been taking it for the past three or four years. I see, I yeah. see. And um, when you were coming up with some of this, I'm assuming that you had taken parent feedback and you talked about MCAS and student performances. Yes, yeah, so in the math, I mean, we um, last year uh, we met with um, groups of students who were in the algebra, who weren't in the algebra class, and got some feedback on how they were doing. Um, received a lot of feedback and conversations with parents, and then throughout the year and this year, uh, meeting with teachers and uh, looking at particular cases of students who were on the bubble for the algebra class, how they're performing this year. You know, does it appear as though they could be handling algebra? Could they be successful? And so that we spent a lot of time looking at the data and having those conversations uh, with students and parents. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
I mean, I don't have any questions. I have no questions. I think that it's a great, a great, I really like what you've done um, substituting the media literacy with something a little bit more. It's like kind of like a study skills. You're in middle school now. You need to step up, and here's some tools to help you step yes. up effectively. I think that's a great idea for sixth grade. Um, and the rest of them look fantastic. So, I mean, it's Thank great. You. Kids Thanks. are going to be happy. Thank you. No questions. Looks good. Yeah, no, I think I, I have to say, I think it takes a particular incredible level of creativity and ingenuity to find time in a 12 day rotation that I can't even begin. I've had four children experience it and I don't have the first idea how it works. I'm so, still actually trying to figure it out. Well, like I was just going to say, it must be a compliment I'd to your to own math it. skills <laughs> that you're able to do that. But um, I just, I, I think it's really incredible, I mean, both of you, how you have, how you continue year after year to go back and look at the same schedule and find new opportunities within it and you know just to strengthen what you're offering to the kids and make it more responsive to the needs that you're seeing so i think it's incredibly creative i really want to compliment all of you on the um math pathways meeting that we had earlier this week i think um that it was a gr there was a huge amount of parent interest and i think a great opportunity for them to understand all of this which is most likely why they're not all sitting right there asking questions right now because it was really well yeah. articulated well really well researched thoughtfully prepared and um so i have zero questions just another you know just a compliment on you know you've been plugging away particularly at math for a long time and continuing to try to um refine it and, and improve it. And so I think this looks like a great opportunity for the kids for next year. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I will just, if I can piggyback on what you said, I, it, I, one of the things I really like about the, and this is my third iteration for kids going through the math pathways that I feel like you have done very strongly with this is you're catching kids across where all their different mm. skills are at. Kids that are struggling that need a little bit more math and then kids who are ready for more challenge and then those kids that could do the algebra that wouldn't have been able to in the current system. So I I think that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. All right. Well, Dr. McLeod, do you have a recommendation? I would recommend um, that, that the school committee approve the amendments to the middle school program of studies for 2018-19. So I just need a motion so <coughs> moved. and a second. Second. Okay. And um, all in favor? Yes. 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 So that was a motion by Mina and a second by Jen. Um, so thank you very much. That was thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I know you don't have anything um, to get up for tomorrow morning. <laughs> right, well, so. I'll see, see you all at Elmwood tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yes. Community yes. Reader Day. Looking forward to that. I'm Community Reader Day is a highlight. All right, um, so moving on to the Director of Student Services contract, Dr. McLeod. Right, so there was, um, uh, this was on the agenda for the last meeting, um, was removed from the agenda at that time um, because between the negotiations that you had approved in, in executive session for me to have with Dr. Zaleski and the public vote, um, there had been some concerns that had been brought to all of our attention. Um, and so for that reason, it was placed on tonight's meeting to give us some time in between to consider, uh, to listen to and understand what those concerns were um, in a way that um, was in a different venue than potentially public comment. So with that said, it's back on the agenda for tonight. Um, as we know, the, um, the approval on February 1st in the executive session uh, for me to negotiate the contract extension for Dr. Zaleski's contract was my recommendation. Um, and uh, I did receive your approval to go ahead and do that. I have since negotiated, successfully negotiated the, um, the terms that we had agreed to and have a signed contract um, with Dr. Zaleski. So I am tonight looking for your um, formal vote to approve the contract extension. Okay, any questions? Just a comment, uh, if I may. Sure. Um, just the <coughs> fact that all the letters and emails that we received, they were, they were quite disturbing um, to me personally. Um, I felt like the feedback that the parents sent, it was important to listen and understand that. Um, and one thing that emerged from it for me personally was there is room for improvement on the communication front. And um, I know that 
Um, now, I, our acting superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, will work with Dr. Zaleski to address some of these, and I know that all of you have made an attempt already reaching out to parents in this area. So I would just want to say um, that if you can continue that path of building the trust and keeping the communication channels <coughs> open, and likewise, my <coughs> request to parents would be that there's a lot of change that's happening, and like Dr. McLeod said, um, Dr. Kavanaugh has chosen to step up into this role, so I would request all parents to support through this transition um, and as you work through some of these challenges that have been brought to our attention. Um, I think it's important that we all support one another through this. So just wanted to make sure I express what I was feeling. Okay. Anybody else? All right, so I am looking for a motion to approve the contract extension for the director of student services so moved and a second i'll second it um a motion by mina a second by jen all in favor yes, yes. yes. okay and so that is approved um moving on to the review of the annual town meeting warrant uh this is something that i actually asked to add to the agenda i had seen thank you guys um i had seen a copy of the warrant <clears throat> And I noticed some things on there that um, that caught me a bit by surprise. So I thought it would be good for us. We don't do it every year, but I thought it would be a good exercise to go through for us to just read through the warrant and see if there were any um, items that we would like to address um, while it's still in draft form. So I don't know. Has everybody had a chance to read the warrant? And um, are there questions that anybody has in, or concerns that anybody has in particular? I have one question yes. around uh, that item about the special ed reserve fund, I think. Yes. Is that something that we are recommending? Uh, so that was why I asked to put it in. <laughs> okay. um, so we have had a little bit of a conversation about that in the advisory budget group meetings. It was suggested um, as, as I, I think, a, a tool that is used in some districts. Um, for unusual special education requests um, so that basically it's a reserve fund so it isn't built into the base of the operating budget. However, as we've discussed um, throughout the course of our budget cycle this year, all of the increase that we are experiencing in our FY19 budget are recurring expenses and so it, you know, as far as my understanding, and we all know that that's not incredibly deep in the area of municipal finance, but if it's a recurring expense, paying it out of a stabilization fund that doesn't recur only just creates a deficit in the year following. Um, so I did look up, there is a Mass General Law section, um, is it 3413 E, whichever it is. Um, I did look that up. It does say that it can only be established by a vote of the school committee. We haven't actually been asked to vote on it, but I ha but I noticed it was put on the warrant as a placeholder. So I just wanted to bring it up and see if it's something that we would like to investigate and consider moving forward, if we would like to ask that it be removed for this year, and if that's something that the town would like to look at, we could table that discussion and have it a, a more in-depth discussion further in advance of the warrant um, for the following year or if it's something that people see value in and would like to, if it's going to go on the warrant, we actually would have to vote that we wanted to move forward with it. And we hadn't done that, so couldn't be voted on at town meeting at this point anyway. I think it's a great idea. So, to, I, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go, go ahead I actually had some, had some concerns about it, and part of it is my lack of familiarity with it, but the, Special education, we obviously from a standpoint of wanting to support all of our learners regardless of where they are, we need to be able to fund them. In some cases, we need to fund them rapidly as we have seen in having to bring in um, a couple of new positions this year mid-cycle. My, my concern with this reserve fund is, does this then go through the the town that, that that would then make it harder for us to act quickly because then we have to get on two different agendas to access the money to be able to fund say if we have a child who needs an aid who didn't previously and we need to hire somebody we 
Yes, this would mean that yeah. the Board of Selectmen would also have to vote on the release of those funds. So that that is concerning, because to me, we need to be able to fund it when, it, as quickly as we can to get kids what they need. But also my concern from a financial picture is looking from what I have with the town finance this year, beyond the budget that's already being discussed right now, there's not additional money to put into a reserve fund. Correct. That was my so it, it, it would be an empty it? fund, right? Right. Right. But then, you know, with the the way with the way the budget is and not knowing what these costs would be, my understanding was this is something that Susan had talked about uh, when the budget was coming up that this could be something that could be done, like have a reserve fund for special education. Is that not what we're talking about? Well we do have we do have the circuit breaker. I should maybe ask you to weigh in because we're all over here pretending that we know something about math but no it I mean it it is a vehicle that other communities have established um, but there's a couple pieces to it obviously you need to be able to fund the reserve um, so the present budget condition that we're in right now I don't see that we're able to fund the reserve so the creation of of an empty reserve could be, you know, what what we're doing here. Um, the mechanism would be such that, in terms of, you know, expediency, what you would most likely do is spend the operating budget into a deficit. Then you would have to go in front of both boards to see if you can, you know, pull money from the reserve to because you would. You're right. You have to address student needs. You know. Um, right away um, so it, it is a mechanism we as the school committee have no way of funding that 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 um, and yes it, you know in terms of getting the expenditures it is an agreement both it's an approval both by um, the school committee and the board of selectmen I see I guess the uh, I was just going to add to that that you know it, it seems to me that if there were a fund like that um, then when it comes to the end of year balances, of which there won't be much this year, but w of which there typically is, that we're able to make decisions about prepaying certain things, um, I would think that there might be a discussion with the Board of Selectmen at this time of the year as to what are any excess funds and should that be m money be going to this established revolving account. Mm -hmm. By having it within our control, um, we're able to respond quickly, as Sue has just indicated, to uh, things that unexpected expenses. And then we make transfers that we then bring to you mm -hmm. to say, well, we prepaid um, except transportation. And because we had prepaid that, we have this amount of money that we can then make a transfer. We wouldn't be able to do any of that if at the end, and this is where I anticipate a potential problem, if at the end of a year, there is $500,000 and there's an expectation that that money be then placed in this reserve that is no longer controlled by the school committee. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the way I understood it is that, um, you know how when we were going through the budget, we always had that two percentage points. I yes. was thinking that's what we are talking about putting into yep. this it, reserve fund. It, now it would have been, and it, this was a suggestion that was made to me um, by the town manager, um, but again, in the absence of Mr. Graziano, um, who we had this discussion, Sue, I don't know if you could, if you're ready to jump in on it, but the idea of taking the eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars that we had said was the equivalent of two percent in our budget, and we had long said these are the budget drivers. If we didn't have that two percent, if we could take that and, and deal with it differently, but that's this year's budget, and the establishment of this re revolving account or reserve wouldn't even be happening until approved for next year's budget so how would that exchange help in any way um well it wouldn't it wouldn't okay. so it, um we had talked about the um the the increase the budget drivers for next year and and two percent really being driven by special education out of district tuition and the correction on circuit breaker but that was really just a recognition of the difficulties and the drivers within our budget. In other words, we don't have a choice in addressing that part of the budget. So when we're asked to uh, bring in a budget at three and a half percent, as a for instance, 
and we're already at 2% just addressing that, um, you know, it, it makes it very difficult to abide by the, the budget guidelines. So that's where we were just really, from a political standpoint, these are the parts of the budget that, of which we have no choice. Um, but separating it out in the reserve fund really is a different animal. So it's something that, you know, the town would have to fund. And I agree with um, Dr. McLeod in that if the direction were to the school committee that your end of year balances were to be used to fund, yes, you do lose control of what has been voted as the school committee budget. So I would not advise that. So there would have to be another funding mechanism to fund that stabilization. Which there isn't this year, Adam. <laughs> so it seems to me if there's no funding source that it, we're not ready to yeah, to I mean, entertain, or I'm not, anyway, I don't want to speak for I, I'm trying to read a little bit more about it right now, too. I found something, Belmont went through something similar, it looks like, and does it, it seems to me that the only real benefit of it, if we had the money in the first place, was that we would be earning interest on a fund that could potentially f take care of unanticipated special education costs. But the drawbacks are that we lose the ability as a school committee to fund <laughs> unanticipated special education mm. costs because then now we have to go through another committee in addition to our committee in order to loosen up those monies. So how does it, is that the, am I missing any other benefits? Is there another? No, the, you know, the real, the real um, driver is the advantage that the, the that your school committee has now, or we're being able to prepay future uh, obligations with regard to special education. So that in and of itself has allowed you the flexibility to handle some of these unanticipated costs. Not every community has that flexibility. Okay. So when you do not have that flexibility at all, this is the stabilization that rescues those communities mm -hmm. because they have no other access within their, um, within their budget to pay for these surprise um, unanticipated costs. Which is in some ways similar to what's happening to us this year. Well, and I think based right? on what you just said, in addition, as we have seen, you know, definitely this year and, and the year and two before that, um, the increasing needs and diversity that we're experiencing as the town is growing has proven to be so unpredictable. Um, and that's in part, it's in part a factor of what we're experiencing this year that I think putting ourselves in a position of less flexibility is not a good idea at this point. I think you know, as you just described it, um, the way that we do it currently does allow us more flexibility. So coupled with the fact that there is no source of funding for this for this year, and in addition that um, I, you know, I, I think we need more flexibility now rather than less given the changes that we are continuing to experience. Um, and just, I think, honestly, in general, the lack of, you know, this is, we're all trying to solve this problem, but there's a lot of information that we don't even have. I wouldn't feel comfortable moving forward with this this year. I think if the town, you know, if there were to be a larger conversation and a better understanding of how this would work in conjunction with the circuit breaker and what would be the expectation in terms of our end of year balances and ability to prepay or would there be a different um, source of funding for this. I think all of those conversations really need to be a part of this. I feel to me this feels rushed to put it on the warrant for this year and so I think my recommendation is that we request that this be taken off the warrant for this year pending further discussion and study. I'm not going to say a flat no. I'm sure right. that there are advantages to it that are not apparent to me that, um, you know, that are worthy of discussion, but I don't feel that that's going to happen in the context of the fact that we have no money and that we have very little time left. Um, so I think for, for myself, 
my recommendation would be that that we ask that this be withdrawn from the warrant this year and you know and set aside for further discussion and study for for going forward um, because I do you know I do have a hesitation in special education is such a, a challenging thing to understand and we have very experienced professionals that deal with it and so asking people who don't have the level of familiarity with our budget and with our program that we do to weigh to, to weigh in on what is basically not really even an uh, something you can say no to I just it's not readily apparent to me how that adds value to the process and if the value of feeling a value added is that it relieve some of the stress on our operating budget I think this year is the best illustration that we've had in the nine years that I've been here that you know you can move money whatever money the town owes the town owes and it's gonna come out of your tax bill and if that's for this year if that's excluded debt versus an operating budget whatever the particular balance of that is may matter in terms of whether or not we need an override but it doesn't matter in terms of what is going to be in your tax bill and this feels the same to me um, yeah. And if I might, by way of an illustration that I think might help in this example, um, one that comes to mind that, that happens once in a while is a request by the Director of Student Services for an out-of-district placement. Um, that, let's say, is quite expensive. Um, that comes with a lot of background information. You know, why is it necessary? What other kinds of things have been tried within the district? What other placements have been looked at? Um, what other funding sources are there that we have already exhausted? Those are all things that central office would be part of before we ever brought it to the school committee for um, and recommended a transfer. Um, and those are that that's kind of information that, that actually couldn't be shared. Um, and it's even information that you don't ask the details of because it's it's you know it's not it's something central. that we can share. Yeah. Um, but as Jean points out, it's something that there's a lot of scrutiny on, there's a lot of information on, um, and there's, there's always a lot of steps that have been taken before it would be casually requesting something like that. Um, but you're right, for an outside body to, who are now fiscally responsible for managing some money, I would think that they would want to be asking a lot of questions to which we would not be able to reply. Right. And, you know, I completely understand the point that you're making about flexibility and wanting to turn it around quickly. I, I guess I'm, I just want to be clear, the reason why we had asked to have this in the first place was purely for this year, wanting to keep within that number. Is that what it was? About? We didn't. A we didn't no. ask to have this at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It no. And the, the, the big piece that's missing in in the whole discussion, when when you establish a fund such as this, is you have to establish the funding source. Um, so I've been involved in establishing a fund such as this, and in discussions on the funding source. Um, you know, the a suggested funding source was that they would take it from Circuit Breaker the following year, which of course then would put me in a deficit again. So establishing the funding source is extremely important. They didn't use Circuit Breaker, I won that battle, but what I'm saying is that's a very important point that we don't have yet. Right, I mean, it would be possible, let's say that somebody wanted to take money out of the town stabilization fund to fund this stabilization fund. Well, these are recurring costs. So if you take money out of town stabilization to pay for money in the operating budget of the school district, now in FY20, you still have to add this money into the school operating budget because it's reoccurring expenses. And now you also have to pay back the stabilization fund for the town. So I, I really, my fear is you would double the, the obligation in, in one year and I don't, I don't, I don't think that's what we're trying to do. And so potentially, if I'm understanding the, the in FY20, then instead of if we're back in another difficult year, we're at it, we'd be looking for the two percent plus potentially another whatever percent the increase would be, which would, exactly. would make it um, impossible to stay within the budget message. And this can only be two percent of the total school 
budget. We're using 2% just because that's our I, I know, but I think this fund is it maxes oh, out at 2% oh, oh. of <coughs> so regardless it would only be 2%. Oh, interesting. Isn't that an interesting at least according to the comparison DESE website. Um, the other thing not to keep beating this but um, if if there were a funding source that magically appeared it would be great because it appears anyway that this is earmarked specifically for special education and that's all it's not like we have extra money at the end of the year and then we pre this is only for that if i'm if i'm reading this right right that's correct so if we don't use it the following year we continue to earn interest on the fund and now we have x amount of dollars more already to contribute should the need arise so it could be a positive thing but the point that gene has made <laughs> very eloquently is that there is no funding source so right, right. so i mean if some if it suddenly appeared it might not be a bad thing to look into it i kind agree of with like you it could be, but or down the road yeah. if there was a funding source and it wouldn't inhibit our ability to do things in the way that we're doing it, it would be able to reach beyond what we're already able yeah. to do i would think that could be yeah i think it can't be there this year i do I think that if the if after further discussion and a better understanding of the practicality of how it would work, um, if it were something that we did see value in and the town wanted to start to incrementally fund it and build up the way that, I know it's not the same kind of liability, but the way that they are starting to address the OPEB liability or starting to build a capital stabilization fund or incrementally adding to the town stabilization fund, I think that approach feels to me much more sound. But I don't feel like this is you know again i don't have experience with other towns but the idea that this is like a one-year effort seems shocking to me at all period because of the, the magnitude of money i don't think any town has an extra eight hundred thousand dollars sitting around in a year um yeah and i don't think the intent of this is that eight hundred thousand that that we're talking about i think the intent is to create the fund so we have it for the future but the big question mark still is the discussion on the funding source okay all right, so on this one, I think we've debated this one. <laughs> Sorry for uh, No, no, I think it it's good. It's very hard to understand in my mind. So on this one, what I'm what I, my uh, my takeaway is that I will be sending an email requesting that this be withdrawn um, as a place. It says I think it does say a placeholder that this mm -hmm. placeholder be withdrawn um, pending you know just further discussion and um, and review. You know, with an idea of that it, it could be something that could be on a future warrant. Um, so that was one. Um, did anybody have any other questions? I have a couple things, but I can wait to go. Um, I guess I was trying to compare this to our uh, latest uh, capital items list, um, and I was just wondering where that is, where we are with it, if there were any changes from the last time we met. We have that coming up. <clears throat> under old business B. Okay, so is that up. okay? Yes, I'll okay. hold up. That is a good point, though, Mina, because I think one of the things that um, Susan and I talked about is maybe changing the source of funding for some of our articles. So that would mean whatever placeholders are in mm -hmm. here for our cap for, for our debt <coughs> exclusions might, might have to change. change. Mm -hmm. So that is, but I think we'll talk about that in the budget part. Okay. But I will make a note that we'll have to adjust. Um, our warrant articles pending the finalization of the capital list based on the budget discussions. Um, so I'm making that that note right now. Um, anything else? Okay, I had a couple of other questions, um, and I don't know if you will you will any of you know the answers to these or if they're just questions that we could submit for response to the town but um, I see that this article regarding the FY19 revolving funds um, would establish a limit on amounts that could be expended and I'm wondering if this it applies to school revolving funds or only town revolving funds we have our own policies regarding our revolving funds so I wouldn't be comfortable having somebody else dictate a level a, a so the revolving fund, different revolving funds are established under different chapters of the law, and depending on the chapter of the law that it's established under, there is a limit that is set, but that is not um, the school revolving fund. So this is this article is not related to school revolving funds, so it's not my beeswax. Is your <laughs> except as a taxpayer. I, except so as a really taxpayer. Like I just want to make sure. That's great. 
not letting something Technical. go. And it's um, so the capital articles, yes. Um, I did notice, and this would stay as a debt exclusion regardless, um, they have the incorrect number in this the um, article for the athletic fields. They are reflecting in the warrant that the CPC voted $2.7 million, which would be super great, but they didn't. They voted $1.7 million, which is already unprecedented. Um, so that's just probably a typing error, but that should be... Um, addressed and then finally um, we had asked that a revolving fund be set up for the athletic fields and that is not in the warrant um, oh um, I know that there was confirmation um, email confirmation on something that I was copied on yep. um, on the request and I believe <clears throat> Sue that it was included in um, something that came out that was looking at um, all revolving accounts, correct? And that's correct. I'm there was to find your email which article. Well, just which article that? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in, more of an omnibus article which covers all revolving right, funds. Right, 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 right. The only one that I saw, well, no, I just see the FY19 one. I didn't see one that I thought applied to everything. Um, and it's entirely possible that I just didn't, I misread, but I would like to be, I would like confirmation that it's covered because we've asked multiple times, as is Parks and Rec, and um, as you know, if we request that something be on the warrant, nobody has the authority to remove it. Other than well, and we want to make, right, because given deadlines, et cetera, the, that we know that that request. Move forward if the town were to support right, it. Right, but we do know that the request went in within the time frame. Yeah. So what would you like us to do about this, so, Jean? Well, this is, so this is a question. I think we have some, some warrant-related questions to forward to the town tomorrow. I don't know if you prefer to do that or you'd like me to do that or we do that together or however you would like to do it. But um, I think... Uh, I think if, if you're willing to do it and um, copy um, Dr. Kavanaugh and Sue, just in terms of, I know we can't put our fingers on it right now, but I know that there was, has been email con conversation around this. So. All right. Well, why don't I wait mm -hmm. until you don't have, I don't want to put you on the spot now, but uh, tomorrow, if you're able to find what the conclusion was, so if, if, I'm, if I'm just missing it in here, I certainly don't need to include well, that in my email. The only thing I can see is the departmental revolving funds bylaw. And, it, and, the, and it's just very general. So, you know, obviously this is not the language that is, I think what they're doing is letting the Board of Selectmen know that there will be a revolving fund article. It doesn't really say much in here, so it's hard to tell whether the rest of the language would be that omnibus article. All right, and I, so I didn't even see where that one is. Uh, it's on page 20. 20? Correct. Um, I know, because they don't have the numbers in them right now, so it makes it a little bit harder. Right. Departmental revolving funds bylaws. There it is. Okay, so I will ask if that is the one that is going to be where our athletic field revolving fund would be included, and if not, where would it, because we don't otherwise see it. Okay, so I'm going to send a draft to you guys to make sure that I said everything correctly. Um, so did that capture everything that you all saw in the warrant? Yep. And then um, to your point, Nina, the other part would be updating the um, <coughs> debt exclusions to fit whatever is our current version of our capital <coughs> excuse me, um, requests. So, all right, thank you. I think that that was good, and I will, I will send a draft. I'll work on a draft with you all tomorrow, and That'd then be we'll great. send that along. Yep. So, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so now we can move on to old business, the before <clears throat> and after care program contract. Dr. McLeod. Thank you. I just um, got an update on a weather um, oh, situation no. for the morning, so I'll tell you about that after. Um, thank you. So um, on tonight's agenda is a consideration for a recommendation, sorry, that the school committee accept the contract for the after care program. Um, before we ask you to do that, however, um, I, I've asked Ms. Rothermick to be prepared to just do a brief overview of the process. I know that there was a memo 
a very thorough memo, um, so we're not asking you to go through the memo, um, but just kind of an overview of the process and then uh, the opportunity for questions um, before, before we get to the motion. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so as you may or may not be aware, any lease or rental of a building is subject to um, the same procurement law that we use for goods and services for many other things. So it's all under the Mass um, Public Pro Procurement Act um, 30B, which is why you take this out to bid. Um, so it's the same process that we used three years ago. <laughs> put the um, bid out, we put together a committee that consists of the um, elementary principals, uh, Dr. Kavanaugh and, and, and myself, um, looking at all aspects of the program. Uh, the, you know, the fact that they uh, run a similar program in other schools. Um, <laughs> Sorry, with weather issue. Price, uh, you know, quality of, uh, quality of program. And, you know, it, it's very detailed as to what actually is asked for within the bid. Um, and it's also very detailed as to how each bid will be evaluated. Um, so you see the, the memo that talks about um, everything that was, that was looked at. Um, and just, you know, everything is then tallied up and, you know, just very detailed based on the evaluations by each of the um, people that were on the team. So that's a little bit about the, the, the process itself. Um, the other piece to keep in mind, it, because we're required by law to go out to bid, this in no way is a reflection or an evaluation of the existing program. So this is to put out our contract for the next potential three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, uh, when I looked at it, obviously you have a great uh, group of people right there, uh, you know, leaders who, uh, of, of all of our elementary schools, and of course Dr. Kavanaugh and yourself, um, you're providing all of these uh, perspectives. I'm wondering if you considered adding one or two uh, parent representatives in the selection committee? Well, we didn't. Um, it's something that we could consider for the, for the next round. Okay. Uh, I guess from a parent perspective, one of the things that would matter is, for instance, the cost of the program itself. Was that something which was part of the consideration? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So they are comparable? Yes. But for the parents, what it would cost on a yes. weekly basis. Yes. So the, the proposal, um, the, the vendor um, that the contract would be awarded to, the cost would be the same. I see. Um, and do we know if Kids Bureau supports programs for children with special needs? Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, that's excellent. And um, now that we have more room and, you know, we were never able to use Center, now we have Marathon. Is it a possibility to have a Y continue at uh, Elmwood? Is that a possibility? No. So the bid is written for an aftercare program for all of our students K to 5. The locations were defined within the bid where it would be housed, but the bid itself is for all of Hopkinton's K-5 to students. And um, now, right now, currently, the demand versus the availability, how is that? Uh, is Kidsboro able to meet the demand? Yes. Do you have any idea around so that? So apparently, Mina, I know that you had asked a question about um, um, location. And apparently parents have a choice as okay. to which which location they would want their child to attend, of course, until it becomes full. Um, and there is a different, when I spoke with um, Ms. Rothermick earlier today, um, there is a different um, charge based on where they, where they attend the program. That's correct. So the, there, there will be a different rate. It will actually be less expensive um, for Kidsboro families to go uh, to stay at the school. I see. It'll be more expensive to go to their location. Um, and uh, so that's between their rates, but compared to what parents are paying today to why? Compared to what parents are t p paying today, it is the same. I see. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This is very helpful. 
Mm. I have one. Oh, go ahead. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. You talk. I just wanted a point of clarification. The I, I know that when we had talked about busing, that there was going to be a bus going from the school t to Kidsboro. Will there be now a bus going out to the Y for parents who choose to stay with the Y? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the Y continues to be an aftercare program. It's just their location will change and yep. transportation will be available to them as it is to any other aftercare provider. Yep. And this memo says that it's a one-year contract. Is that correct, or is it? So the way the way the the bid is written, it is for three years. Each year, it's an annual renewal. Okay. So at the end of a year from now, I will come to you and say whether to recommend to that renew that. For, so it's for three potential three one-year renewals. And the. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to make sure. So over the course of the next three years, does the cost of the program, is that run into the contract to how much the cost of the program changes over the next three years, or is it static? The cost or what they will pay us? I guess, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> what I was thinking, I was thinking about it in, from the parent standpoint. So parents who take advantage of this, will the cost to families for this program, every year we, we renew the contract, is there something in there stipulating how much the cost of families will change, if at all? Um, we don't stipulate what the incremental rate would be, but if we were to find out that the rates were going to double as, sure. as a, then for instance, would. then we may not recommend okay. to renew. And what about for us? Yeah, so our rental... It's, it's going to be 195000 for over, over three three, years. the course of three years. Okay, Correct. okay. All right. And uh, when you come back next year, Mr. Rathamich, would it be that there would be another evaluation of some kind, uh, which would entail others, how the programs are going? What would that look like? What would that process look like? I, I wouldn't say it would be a formal. It would be, you know, the, the principals that are within the buildings, um, you know, if they have some dire concerns then they may recommend not to renew. I would not bring in an evaluation committee to, to do that. But it, it's a three-year contract, is it not? It's a three-year contract, but each, it's a one-year renewal. Renewals that we would bring. Right. Um, and, and you may have said it already, and if you did, I apologize. Um, but I just wanted to make clear that in no way is an RFP process an evaluation of the current program. Did you already say that? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And, and um, you know, I know that there were concerns expressed based on the decision that th there was something wrong with, with the current program, um, and, and that is not the case. But I, I apologize if you already said that. No, okay. If I could just add, I mean, so th I remember three years ago this went the other way, and there were um, actually uh, probably, well, I won't compare the volume. There, was, there were a number of parents who were upset about that change, Parents are upset about this change. Change is always difficult. You get into routines, and your kids are established in those routines. And um, you know, so certainly that that's something that that we understand, and isn't something that we set out to do necessarily. But this is a public process. The 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 financial component is the last part that's opened. Everything else is considered before that's even opened, and people are even aware of it. So I think it's not really. It certainly was never intuitive to me before I was on the school committee how the public bid process works and if I were asked to pass a test on it I would not get a good grade but I do understand enough about it to know that it is a very um, prescribed process a very um, detailed steps that you have to go through in, in a sequential order and so um, so just to reinforce what you're saying this isn't at all a critique of one program right. versus a compliment of another it's it's an analysis that in my mind is very close clearly between two companies because we've gone back and forth between the mm. two of them and you know that may very well happen again in three years but so I mean I certainly understand that change is hard and as you pointed out um, you know just as we did three years ago for people who were wanting to stay with their same program and now needing a bus transportation that will happen in the reverse this time so um, I did want to just just say that we did receive a number of emails about that and um, Dr. McLeod and I have responded and, and tried to explain how the process works which I think people found if not interesting at least helpful and um, you know and again this 
maybe it will go a different way in three more years. But this is a process that we have to go through. So, and this is <coughs> this is the result for this year. So, if there are not any other questions, I there just, are. There is one. <laughs> <laughs> I just have one comment, and I know you all work so hard to pull all of this together. You've clearly put in a lot of effort into you know, evaluating, coming up with this, looking at so many things before coming up with this. Um, and when we get those emails from parents, like, panicking, right, um, I wonder why that's happening. Why, why are people panicking just when we are about to vote? And um, I feel, is it that, is there something we can do better with communication, um, informing people ahead, preparing them ahead of time? Or is it that we are doing it and maybe people are not opening emails? I don't know where the gap is, but I feel like that panic and having to respond to all of that, it's stressful for everybody after you have done so much work. Um, so I'm just wondering, throwing this thought out there, what is it that we can do collectively better? Well, as uh, you may or may not remember, a couple of months ago I came to you and yes. we established the minimum rental value. Yes. And we declared at that meeting that we would be going out to bid for the aftercare program again. Um, you can't really, you know, so I did deliver the news uh, confidentially to both vendors um, prior to coming here so that it would be respectful uh, of the vendors. So I'm not really sure, other than tonight making that announcement, how we would have reached parents because, again, it, it was confidential and respectful of all the vendors that, that bid. And I don't mean to put you on the spot here, Ms. Rathamesh, at all. I'm just saying something for us to think about. Uh, is there something that we can do to avoid the panicky situation? And maybe I'm new and this is new to me, maybe this is common, uh, but I just uh, find that anxiety, if there is any way that we can reduce that, um, that would result in a more respectful way to resolve issues. Well, I think if I could just chime in, this actually isn't final because we haven't even voted on it yet, so I think it would have really um, not been appropriate to have emailed all of the parents prior to this meeting to say, just so you know, um, <laughs> this is happening. It, it, it will happen as of tonight, and I think your point is well taken in terms of communicating it, communicating what our decision is. I think you, you know, I think it's always respectful to let the people who, the, the vendors know, so that they don't find out by watching our meeting um, what the result is. You know, when they choose to share that information with their families isn't something that's in our control, and certainly we're doing our best to respond um, to the volume of emails that we're getting. Um, you know, and, and Dr. McLeod has, has responded to a number of them, as have I. Um, so I think your point is well taken in terms of communicating our process and our decision, but I just want to reinforce that our process and our decision is t tonight. It isn't before this, and so I, I don't think it would have been appropriate for us to have sent, you know, a listserv out right. saying th this is something that might happen tonight. You know, the, I, the uh, maybe on the other end of it though, at the very beginning, back in January, to and I don't actually recall back how we did advertise it, but is it something that we could look at as a school committee? To just so people are aware that hey, this is going out to bid. Um, this is this is the process, uh, and to be aware of it, so that people haven't already made their plans and counted on, you know, what they're going to do next year, and then having to go back and figure it out. Well, so you know, to to that point, Nancy, that's something that we've done right with with policy, mm -hmm. and we've I, done it, and and it's been very successful yeah. um, in terms of bringing out people who have a concern about a particular policy. Um, but I guess what I wonder, and the question was in my mind, was the vendor also knows that they are so going to be good, going out good to point. bid. Good point. And it is a business that is not the responsibility of the school other than to rent the space. And so it makes me wonder, you know, wouldn't that be something that they might want to make their um, their parents aware of that just so you know that this is this right we did not make a decision to not run a program and it, I, it, we did I not ask that. parents to, to change daycares what the decision that was made by the school is who was going to be renting the space mm -hmm. 
based on the bid, right? Well, um, and so both both programs, you know, can still run, um, and those are all decisions made by the organizations and, and what they're going to do, and obviously the schools doing whatever they can through transportation to help make that happen. I'm not minimizing the stress that comes from a daycare change, believe me, and I, I do understand it. Um, so I don't mean to be minimizing it, but I, I, I just wonder at what point does it become the responsibility of, you know, in this case, you know, well, the, any of the vendors. In this case, it would have been two of them because they are both servicing students currently in our town. I don't know if the other vendors were or were not. Um, but I don't, don't know if they have the opportunity to do that. Do they, Sue, within the no. process? They can't do that. They can't say we're, we're bidding on a Oh, they project? can. Oh, oh absolutely. They but can. they wouldn't have access to the parents the way our two local vendors would. That's what I mean. But our local vendors could have told their oh, parents it, back in. Everything is a public process. Back when you came. Uh, absolutely. And, and the criteria that they're, you know, that in the in the request for proposal is very specific. I mean, there's there isn't anything that should be a surprise. And I think, you know, in part, I, I don't know. That's not my business. I, I don't do this business. But you know, you, you gotta, you always gotta put your best foot forward, and you'll, you know, you'll learn from. From the process, if it's a close competition, sort of, how do you, how do you need to respond differently, or, you know, what can you do to it's to be. And and Jean, I think you said that earlier, and I completely understand that someone is going to get it, which means someone else is not going to get right, it. Right, right, right. So that that will always be the case. I guess I where I was coming from. I hope you understand is just preparing the parents that this is coming up rather than that last minute anxiety and I don't know if the answer lies here at this moment yeah. something to think about mm -hmm. That's all. I think all fair points one other thing does occur to me and I when we look at the language of what's in our packet in looking at the motion to accept the aftercare contract in fact it, it seems to me that that's sort of maybe misleading in some way because we are this is a very prescribed process that we are required to do it this way, that we can't really just say, now we, we don't want to do that. We're going to do something else anyway. Oh, that's true. I, and I don't, I don't have a better solution to how we do it, because this is the way that I know yeah. that we conduct our business for a reason. But You know, and I think the other uh, agenda point to, uh, to your point is that that's exactly why it's under old business. This is not the first time we've talked about it. It's specifically under old business because it was raised as part of the whole RFP process. When did you say? In Back in January. January. Right? Right. So but you're right. It, and it is a motion to accept, but it also is no, more true. just a, a, an acknowledgment that we've completed the process right. more than a, an actual vote. And it, so I guess all, my, own, my only statement is that I, this should not come as a surprise to any of the parents in either setting necessarily um but fair point and are we accepting a contract or accepting a bid you're accepting the contract, contract. accepting a con or awarding a contract awarding the contract. we are awarding a contract okay i just want to make sure and and just to be clear you said the cost of the program remains the same at the schools as long as they're at the school with what they what the parents are paying today for the current program provider Correct. and if they choose to go to the outside location the fees would be higher mm -hmm. and kid for kidsborough for kidsborough mm -hmm. do we have any idea how much higher uh, it would, we do have capacity it, right probably, we, we have plenty of capacity okay great that that's not an issue and yeah, that's right. outside of our scope yeah. what the, okay. right what they charge at their location is really not our purview I see okay or beeswax <laughs> Twice one meeting. Um, <laughs> I, I really liked it. I thought I'd find a way to squeeze it in again. Okay, so um, I, unless there's anything further, I am looking for a motion to award the aftercare contract as presented. So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. Okay, so a motion by Nancy. I'm a sorry, by do you need Nancy? to say to who? To, well, well, I said as it. presented. You did, I, and I I'm wondering. To, to Kidsboro? I think so. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to remove that. Remove it. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I remember, I know that it was like that on, for a reason. Right. <laughs> um, but
but I do think when we say as presented, it means in the memo, but I think it should be. Fair enough. Let's, it. can't hurt to be more specific. No. So just do the backwards thing. Yeah. Um, so now I am looking for a motion to award the aftercare contract to Kidsboro. So moved. In a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you for all your work on that. Um, and just for the parents, we will absolutely work with you. We have made successful transitions in the past, and we will we will do so again. We understand that's a challenge. So. And I, I'm sorry, but I have another question before you move on. Yes, ma'am. The question is for Ms. Rothermick. Is there any before care involved? There is before care. Right. So you just oh, voted after care. Uh, and I, it's really our fault because it should have been worded better in the agenda, but I think we should get the vote right. Yes. Um, Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day. All right. I am looking for a motion to award the before and, air and after care contract for the Hopkinton Public Schools to Kidsboro. So moved. And a second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's good. We that definitely good need point. to get it right. Yeah, no, that, that was else. part of our beeswax. So. That was. Yes. That was our beeswax. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -oh. oh no. All right. Well, I think the fun is stopping because now we're going to talk about that. <laughs> oh yes, we are. Um, I don't know honestly how much. Unfortunately, the joint meeting that was scheduled this week was canceled, and then the budget discussion that was going to happen at the board of selectmen meeting on Tuesday also was canceled. So really, nothing has changed since our last meeting, with the exception that I think you all have had further conversation and review on the capital articles so so if I'm um, mistaken forgive me because there have been a lot of budget meetings but I do believe that we had agreed to vote to meet and vote on potential capital reductions um, at the last joint meeting there were people that were talking about um, reductions we were we were tasked with looking to where we could come up with we we were never quite sure on what amount of money um, but I don't believe and you do have something in front of you um, that was handed out I'm probably in the bottom of your pile um, I don't believe that we've actually voted on as Sue has indicated potential um, budget reductions of what that might look like and so we're prepared am I wrong correct we have not revoted good so if we are prepared and that's why it's under old business to talk was to speak with you tonight about some areas of potential reduction um, we would have been prepared we were prepared to do this on Monday night which is why we have this ready um, but then that meeting didn't happen and you could have potentially voted it then mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Sue, who will go through this with you in terms of the ways in which and the conversations that have happened that have brought us to the potential budget reductions. So Sue, which side of the page do you want them to start yep. on? So if you would like to start on the capital budget request side, um, you'll see some of the discussions that we talked about with um, we talked briefly about some of our capital articles at the at the last meeting, so I'll bring you back through. Um, the turf field project is staying intact. The campus master plan study, and just a reminder, this is um, for the bus parking lot, um, which then will also, if this is approved at town meeting, does bring in excise tax. Um, and the amount was confirmed with me of $50,000. 50, mm -hmm. 50, uh, yeah. 50 uh, The number we've always heard is we've 100. We've always heard 100, but they did confirm that. Okay. Um, the technology upgrades currently is in the uh, PAYGO. My suggestion would be to move that to bond uh, because the technology security upgrades are in the bond. And the reason we would swap those is the security upgrades. Uh, Ashok, Mr. Ghosh, was comfortable with reducing that in, in, in half. And then we would just be strategic about where we would place those, those cameras. So that's a reduction of $100,000. But again, that's in moving it out of a borrowing and in, into um, pay-as-you-go. Uh, the AEDs would stay intact. The walk-in refrigerators, uh, freezers district-wide would stay intact. 
the wetland order of conditions. Currently, we w had put in a $100,000 placeholder, placeholder um, for that old order of conditions. What we're suggesting is that we reduce that to $10,000, which would really just cover the design of those, those wetlands, showing intent of, of moving forward and addressing this old issue that has been hanging out there. Um, the HVAC replacements district-wide, I had mentioned before that this is something that really does need to happen, but my suggestion is that we will defer the projects that are within the operating budget, and I have those named down below, and we'll move that HVAC article into the operating budget. So we're not suggesting to reduce the operating because I think that extraordinary maintenance line is something that will need to continue to grow. Um, Reducing the um, AC at the middle school auditorium and the dishwashers for the cafeteria. And before you turn the page, I think it's really important to point out the deferred projects that would um, result in moving the HVAC into operating so uh, that Sue has outlined below. Yep, so the projects that are within the budget is the Hopkins, the gym partition door, um, the high school guidance carpeting, refinishing the athletic center floor, um, pavement out in the loop for the uh, middle school where there, there's some pavement that is collapsing, painting at both the Hopkins and the middle school, middle school flooring, and that is throughout. So it's, as you go through the middle school, there's you know tiles that are buckling and just various flooring replacement that needs to be done going forward. And the wetlands, the design, we actually had, excuse me, we had that 10,000 in the operating. So we're going to flip that out and make that as part of the capital. Before we, before we flip a page, can I ask a couple questions and say a couple things? Mm -hmm. First is, apropos of our earlier conversation regarding the stabilization fund, I would like to compliment you on the way that you did the um, HVAC replacements. So what I heard you say is it is important to fund those in the operating budget, and that has been a consistent message from the town um, that we should be moving, because many years ago we started cutting all of that when we had no money, that we should be reestablishing re a regular level of extraordinary maintenance in our budgets. And so I think what I see here, as opposed to what we were talking about with the stabilization issues earlier, is a one-year adjustment that will not kick the can down the road. We will have a number in our budget next year, in our foundation budget for next year. Um, so we're not taking it out now and also leaving a deficit that has to be replaced next year. Correct. So I just want to compliment you on that because that, I mean, obviously all these things are important and we will have to get to them and they won't, we're not going to double for next year either, but. Um, <laughs> that won't uh, provide as big an impact as, as what I think it might otherwise have done. And then my other just questions um, are, so in basically flip-flopping the security and technology upgrades, basically what we're doing is saving, wait a minute, we were basically asking for $165,000 in cash and whatever was the interest on $200,000 in our original request. What we're asking for now is $100,000 in cash and the interest on $165,000. So we've reduced the interest ask. I know that's not the right word, but you understand what I'm saying, the interest on the bond, and then also reduced the cash ask. Right, so I thought that was very clever as well. She's clever. She is clever. Yep. So yep. I just wanted to stop and compliment that you and true. also make sure that I understood. <laughs> so, I mean, we're not getting, it's not a $165,000 reduction. It's the difference between whatever was the interest minus right. 100000 or plus $100,000. That's the savings. And so then as a spoiler alert at the end, I'm going to ask you sort of what is your estimate of the total that we're saving in terms of the capital budget? It's on the other side. Oh, okay. <laughs> Flip. Oh, cliffhanger, now please. I see it. Change <laughs> Wait, what's the words that we're supposed to use? The what was it? Anyway, yeah, something about honey. Oh, beeswax. Oh, beeswax. beeswax. Yes. Still Turn on the page beeswax. and mind your beeswax. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a rookie question? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I. That, so on the warrants, there's two articles: one for technology security upgrades and one for middle school HVAC. Yes. Those are so now out of our budget. Yeah. But on the ten warrants, is that correct? So that's what we were saying before. So what we would have to do is request that they take the middle school air conditioning off the warrant. We're deferring that, and instead of the technology. The security upgrades, that would now be the technology upgrades and it would be for a different amount. Okay. All right. So these are, this stuff is old news on the warrants. This is well, the new news. So that's okay. part of the okay. um, response that we're going to send to them tomorrow to make those adjustments. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And just as a reminder, the ones that are called out specifically are borrowings. Again, anything that was PAYGO is an omnibus, okay. which would include any, anything from the all the town departments, including ours, that was being recommended to be funded through the PAYGO. Okay. That's okay. why you don't see those named specifically. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So if you flip to the other side, you'll see the sum total of, of all that work. So you are cutting $75,000 for the dishwasher, $108,500 for the HVAC replacements, $90,000 for the wetlands order of conditions. We're flip-flopping the um, capital articles. You're cutting in half the security cameras for 100,000. We're assuming the debt service on the middle school auditorium for 40,000. So your total capital decrease ask is 413,500. And then as just a reminder, I think one of the Board of Selectmen had originally thrown out a number of, of 600,000 and then gave us credit for the reduction, the renegotiation of the bus contract, which is the 181,000. So the capital and that bus contract together brings you to a reduction of 594,900. And I think it's really, really important when we have this conversation that we continually remind the Board of Selectmen and appropriations that these conversations started when your budget was at 7.3 percent. So the reason it's at 6.9 now is that the, op, the renegotiation of the bus contract, I've heard it referred to kind of in passing as if it was like a mistake. No, it was not a mistake. It was hard work on the part of Sue um, to go back and renegotiate it. And so, and the other point I will make on this is that these are not prioritized and um, when I think back a year ago when the school committee was making having to make similar decisions um, you, you know there are still opportunities to decide amongst these things you know which if any of these um, are you willing to vote but what you see before you tonight is the work that we were asked to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we meaning all of us um, at, the, at those joint meetings. And um, that the portion that you're right, Sue, we certainly heard the number 600,000 um, out there at, at some point. And what the portion is now, we don't know because we haven't met. Um, so I don't think we're, we're necessarily asking for a vote tonight. Mm -hmm. I think it's more, you know, I don't even know, Gene, if it's voting the potential budget reductions so that you're prepared. I don't know where you want to go with it from now, yeah. from here, but. I mean, it's such an unusual, it's really uncharted waters this yeah. year, but, um, <coughs> you know, we're posted and we have a quorum on Wednesday, so we certainly, but, you know, there's so much information that we're still waiting for in terms of we have our projections that we've submitted, but waiting to hear the town projections, whether or not they want to take money out of stabilization, whether or not they have more information on health care. So I think it makes sense to wait until we have that conversation, yeah. but I think we're well prepared to easily make a vote. Yeah. The one thing I'll say, too, is didn't we get the bid and the athletic fields is 3.6? So that, that is the other piece of good news yeah. is the athletic fields are coming in below what we're, what is presented here. Um, we're still, we still put out for additional final bid right. on the, um, on the infill in the, in the shock pad. So that number could even still potentially come down more. Yeah. I would so just, it's moving in the right direction. But for the purposes of Wednesday, I think maybe we should note 
maybe we should reduce the part we already know and mm. then just put an, as an asterisk that it may reduce further. Sure. Just so that they know we're going in the right direction because the, the first part we do know. It's well, it just puts the, us up above 600, doesn't it? Well, except it's really only the borrowing. It's not, not that I was at first. Well, I was like, "Ooh," and yeah. then I realized. Okay. But but the fifty thousand isn't calculated in here either. The kind of I, I know that that's a little bit different because it's money plus. coming in. But that would seem like actually the money that's being saved to the mm. town does mm. push us over six hundred thousand. Well, it adds to the revenue. The buses, right? Yeah. So. If you get revenue, it it offsets some of our. So I think that would be my request: is if we can adjust that, and then on the flip side reflect just the way that you did with the assuming the debt service savings it would actually probably be a similar number right because that article is two hundred thousand dollars for the middle school mm -hmm. auditorium ac so and then maybe also add somewhere the addition of the fifty thousand dollars in excise tax that, that is what I, I sent them that recap after our last meeting but at that point we hadn't gotten the actual number, so I gave them the number that we've been hearing for 10 years, which was $100,000. Yeah. Um, and then I just don't know, is there is there enough debt service on the difference between making the flip-flop that it's worth noting as a savings on the back? I'm not sure there really is. Yeah, so that's just a Yeah, minor. it's pretty minor. My recollection was when we went to the board, of, you and I were at the board of select, Mr. Kamalo had mentioned that he might be able to get us some kind of a grant for the AED. Yeah, devices. we did look further into that, and I think the fire chief responded to you that. Not, not able to. Right, not so much. So. It's okay. But I, we did, I do, we did yep. go back and ask about that. So I just want to say this is fantastic work. So it's, you know, you've been at it again and again and again and re-looked at it in so many ways. But at this point in time, I think, especially with what you have done with the security upgrades, also the reduction there, um, you know, I would give a lot of credit to you and all the members who worked with you, Ashok and everyone else, I would think, buildings and grounds. Um, and I just want to also point out that recently I had an opportunity to go to the Elmwood School as a volunteer in the art room. And it's extremely hot, and it's a small room. And I, your point about the HVAC just hit home. And we need a new building, Mina. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, excuse me? <laughs> hot, you said? <laughs> so um, it was painful to right. watch those kids. Um, and, and for the teacher, um, it was my first exposure looking at how hard the, our teacher was working. There were 20 odd kids who walked in in that small room, which is hot, and she worked with them. And they were, as they stepped out, the next set of kids walked in, and she had to work with all of them. Yep. And, yep. Um, it's not a very comfortable working environment, and you know, it's like a walkway around. So it was quite an eye opener. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I want to thank you too, because I know you also have done work in looking at the operating budget, which if we have to, we have a further conversation you're prepared to have, but I just really want to credit you because after the those additions that we just made, we're basically now at a seven hundred thousand dollar swing. Not entirely in our, our um, mostly not in our operating budget, but as we were all talking about at the joint meeting, in terms of the overall tax impact to the town. And so, you know, um, again, as as we always do, and I know is always at the forefront of your mind, you're keeping the reductions as far away from the classroom as you can. And so, you know, there is some kicking of cans down the road, but I think that these are all, given the situation that we're in, I think these are all the right decision to make. Um, you know, I know not everybody is able to be there, but I'm not hearing any concern or disagreement over any of these particular items, so I would be comfortable if we, if we are in a position where we're asked to vote on, on Wednesday, I would be comfortable doing that. In between times, we can double check with Mr. Graziano if he's not able to phone in or be there on Wednesday. But um, yeah, I just really want to, this is a tremendous amount of work and we're usually so far past the budget at this point. And it just seems to be never ending. So I know you have other work that you're typically doing at this time of year and I wanted to thank you for all the extra time and effort. But in terms of the benefit to the kids, and minimizing the impact on their daily experience. I think this is really a job well done, so. Mm -hmm. 
Can I ask a question about no. uh, shoot <laughs> <laughs> about the meeting itself? Uh, just because this has been something that I, I do feel is important is the whether or not it will be televised. Uh, it, it, there was some concern. It, there was. That. I know there was some. The one meeting was televised, and there was some concern with the next one. Has that been conveyed back to us in any way? Because I think that is important for no, but transparency and no, the don't. magnitude of the yeah. budget issues that the, the entire town is facing. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an excellent point. I don't know if you think, Dr. McLeod, it's best to just ask, or if we should, if I should send an email saying that. I guess my, yeah, I have a question about it. And I had a question about it when I knew that there were concerns the first time. It's a joint meeting. Right. So it's not that we're attending somebody else's meeting or that they're attending our Ours. meeting. So we could potentially um, so request it ourselves. I would think that you could decide that you want to have it recorded. I, I feel strongly that we should have it recorded, and, and we may have contacts that would be able to. We to may help us have somebody we could ask. With that. Do you know someone? I, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all. I, I mean, I just I feel yeah. like if it, you that's know, a good, a out of respect, yeah. if you are attending somebody else's meeting, they're going to make the decision. But right. it, it is a joint meeting. It is a joint meeting, and if this, the the part of the people that are participating want it to be, you know, they want to, they would have the opportunity, I would think, to invite somebody to record the meeting. Um, I think so, and um, at the same time, as a courtesy, just send a note out. That wouldn't be a bad thing either. Mm -hmm. Well, am I hearing that somebody wants to take a vote on? Um, I'd like to make a motion, actually, if that's okay. I'm going to let you craft the motion all by yourself. Oh, this is a lot that? of pressure. I would like <laughs> to make a motion that we reach out to, this is going to be too wordy, I'd like to make a motion that we <laughs> seek to have this meeting recorded. That we televised. That we have it televised, yes, thank okay. you. Uh, and you say the date of the meeting? Recorded. Okay. Recorded. recorded. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. At Peter that, Gallery, so your so motion was. My motion was to have a, the meeting. The joint budget meeting be recorded. On Wednesday. March, March 7th. Thank you. You bet at the senior, senior center. center. Well, don't we just want all of them recorded? All Any future joining? Yes. Uh, all right, let's start all over. We're not doing well with our motions. <laughs> sure, we're like doing to fine make... in correcting them. Yes. <laughs> I would like to make a motion. This is just take two, so I have one more shot. All right, go for it. I would like to make a motion that we have all future joint budget meetings recorded by yeah. HCAM. I'll second it. Yeah. Subject to there. All right, I'm writing that's why I'm slow. All in favor? Yes. 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 Appreciate it. Okay. yes. Thank you. So that's unanimous. Um, thank you very much. I think that's an excellent point. There was a lot of concern and confusion about that in the community. So, um, okay. Very good. And so now we are at our second opportunity for public comment. If there's anybody in the public that would like to comment. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's true. All right. Um, and so then items by consensus, Dr. McLeod. Is there anything anybody would like to pull out before we go? We forward? could just stretch the meeting on to make her last meeting yeah, go as late. long as. I already stretched it. The superintendent recommends a school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Nancy, a second by Mina. All in favor? Yes. yes. Okay, so that is unanimous. And I just <coughs> need a motion to adjourn at 9.08. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, um, all in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you to HCAM. And most especially, thank you so much to Dr. McLeod for her tremendous service over the last five years. We will absolutely miss her. Thank you. I um, actually look forward to being at um, some of the school committee meetings over the, um, the next several months um, and maybe sitting in a different spot. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to get so comfortable. I <laughs> might get comfortable. Too bad these I, are attached or you could just... I, I don't, please, <laughs> I was I thinking about this and I was thinking, please don't get rid of it yet, you know, because I hope to be here for a few more meetings. Excellent. Thank you.